So in this video, I want to talk about the benefits of dividend investing. I'll give you three benefits in my opinion. First, as you saw in the thumbnail, it is probably the easiest passive income you can make. Second, it is very easy to set up and doesn't take much effort or time from you day to day. And third, it's almost guaranteed. It's a slowly but surely process of reaching financial freedom and anyone can do it. So let me elaborate. It truly is the most passive income you can make. Once everything is all set up, you don't have to do anything except receive the dividends and spend it. So basically, the dividends are received in your trading account or your investment account. And all you'll have to do when you retire is basically transfer the money from your investment account to your bank account and then just spend it. There's no other activity you have to do to receive the dividends or generate them or spend them. Although it can take time to set up the process to have enough capital to receive dividends that are sufficient enough to pay for your expenses so you don't have to work again. But once you're there, it's a great feeling knowing that you could do whatever you want with your day. You can wake up whenever you want knowing that whatever you do does not change how much money will be coming in this month. You'll always know how much money is coming regardless of what time you wake up or whatever, regardless of the activities you do throughout your day. It must be an amazing feeling to be there. And just for those who don't know, a dividend is, is when a company pays a portion of its profits to its shareholders. So if you buy a stock, you become a shareholder of that company. And every three months or every month, the company will pay a portion of its profit to, to the shareholders. And that portion is called a dividend, which you can easily see on, on Yahoo Finance, for example, you could see the yield here, which is 5%. So basically, if you put $1,000 in CIBC right now, you'd be getting $50 per year. Without doing anything, you'd be getting $50 per year. Now imagine if you had a million dollars and you put it in CIBC, you'd be getting $50,000 per year. So the idea is to get to that $1 million or $2 million portfolio that keeps paying you dividends so that the dividends received per month or every three months is enough to pay for your bills so that you can be financially free, do whatever you want with your day, wake up at any time, not having someone tell you what to do, basically not having your ability to pay your bills in the hands of someone else. I mean, if you're working for a company at any time, the company can let you go even if you're a good worker, the company can let you go for their own reasons for restructuring or for, for budgeting, for, for lowering their expenses. So at any time you could lose your job and then your ability to pay for bills, your income is gone. So once you set up your own stream of income that's completely passive, you get that security, which is priceless. Knowing that your ability to pay for your bills, your, your ability to pay for your mortgage, for your food, for your utilities is not dependent on the decision of someone else. So now how to get to that $1 million or $2 million portfolio. So let's look at a financial cal calculator and let's give ourselves 25 years. So let's say we're 18 years old. We started working. We're still living with our parents. So basically we can save most of our income because we don't have that much ex expenses. So we're going to give ourselves 25 years. We're going to say that we're starting off with zero. We're going to say that we're putting every year, every month we're putting, we're saving $1,000 in our investment account. We're buying dividend stocks. We're buying stocks of companies that pay dividends. Quality stocks, of course, because you don't want to buy something that goes bankrupt. So Canadian banks, big name companies that have been around forever, have a proven track record, offer a service or product that is that everyone needs, cannot be replaced. So obviously the big banks, uh, something like Procter & Gamble or Walmart or ExxonMobil, Suncor, Coca-Cola, insurance companies like Sun Life, Manulife, Great West, really so many, so, so many companies out there that pay dividends. Even real estate investment trusts pay dividends, sometimes up to 10% per year. All right, so back to our financial calculator. So if we put $1,000 a month, that's a 12,000, that's 12,000 a year. Let's say we're able to make 5% in dividends every year. Now we're going to compound this interest because the dividends that we're going to receive, we're going to use it to buy more stocks. We're not going to spend it right away. We're going to reinvest it to buy more stocks that pay dividends of the same yield, let's say 4 to 5%. I'm going to I'm going to use average 5% because most most stocks will pay 4%, but you can also 
find stocks that pay 6 or 7% or even real estate investment trusts that pay 10%. So let's just say 5% on average will be our return based on the dividends alone. So when you buy a stock, let's say you buy CIBC at 109, it doesn't stay at 109. Eventually over time it'll be at 200 or 300. But we're not going to take that into consideration right now because if we never sell, so the whole, whole idea of dividend investing is to buy and hold forever and just keep collecting the dividends, reinvest the dividends, and then at some point when you're ready to, to retire, you can live off the dividends. So if you never sell, then you never really take advantage of the capital gain. The capital appreciation of the stock does not affect our, does not affect how much dividends we're going to receive. What's going to affect our dividends is how much we put back into the company and how much the dividends increase year after year. So that's why I'm only going to take into consideration for annual return. I'm only going to take into consideration the dividend return. So let's say 5%, 12,000 a year for 25 years. That will give us half a million dollars, $572,000 in 25 years if we're putting only $1,000 a month. If we're saving $1,000 a month for 25 years, we'd end up with $572,000 if we're making a return of 5%. Now, of course, you're not going to be putting only $1,000 every month for 25 years. Your salary is going to increase. You'll be able to put more. So I'm just giving you a conservative example. Let's say $12,000 a month, 12000 a year. So you can see here, principal is $300,000. So that's, how, that's the $12,000 that you put every year for 25 years. That's your $300,000. And the interest, two seventy two. dollars that's basically the return that you've been making. The 5% on your 12,000, and then the next year it's 5% on your 12,000 and the and the original 5%. So that's compound interest, 5% on 5% on 5%. So after 25 years, you won't be receiving 5% anymore because dividends increase year after year. Usually they increase by 5%. So the first year you're making 5% on your investment. The next year you'll probably be making five times 1.05. So you'll be making about 5.25% on your investment. So your annual return increases by 5% every year. So 25 years, the dividends that you'll be collecting will not be 5% of 572,000. If we say that dividends increase 5% year after year, so 1.05 to the power of 25 is 3.38. So you'll be getting 3.38 times 5%. So about, let's say, 16%. So you'll probably be getting 16% of your portfolio or your investment. But obviously, this 16% will mostly apply for the first year's investment. And then the second year's investment will have a smaller rate. And the third year will have a smaller rate. Because you didn't invest everything in the first year. You're investing month by month. But because dividends increased year after year, you can say that you'll be making about 15% of your portfolio. So if you're making 15% of 572000 after 25 years, you're making $85,000 in dividends. So that doesn't touch your portfolio. You, your 572 stays the same, but the companies that you invested in are paying out $85,000 per year. So imagine what you could do with $85,000 that's coming to you for free without doing anything. Now, this is just by putting $1,000 a month. Now, of course, if you're putting $2,000 a month, then we'd have, a di we'd have di different numbers. So let's, let's say we're putting $2,000 a month. We would end up with a million one forty-five, And of course, if you're making 15% of that, you're probably making around $170,000 per year. So as you can see, with dividend investing and compounding your returns, reinvesting the dividends year after year and with time of course having time by your side after 25 years you could easily get a one million dollar portfolio and start living off the dividends so if you start at 18 you could easily retire by 43 if of course you stay consistent stay disciplined keep buying quality stocks that pay dividends reinvest the dividends don't spend the dividends right now and of course if the companies continue to increase their dividends so let's look at real examples so let's look at cibc great canadian bank stock of course let's look for the let's look at cibc for the past 25 years obviously we can't say that the past 25 years will be the will be the same as the next 25 years but let's just look at it to get a 
a good idea. I, I personally think the next 25 years will not be as good as the as the last 25 years. But let's look at CIBC as an example. Let's look at the past 25 years. Let's put it at, at one month intervals, let's say. So past 25 years, that would be in 1994. Uh, it looks like this chart stops at 1995. So let's just start at 1995. You can see that CIBC was trading at $16. So if every month you bought, you put $1,000 in CIBC, regardless of the price of the stock, every month you just bought CIBC regardless of the price for 25 years, and then you took the dividends that was being paid out to buy more stocks in the same company. And as you can see in 1995, CIBC was paying 37 cents per, per quarter in dividends. So 37 cents per share that you own in the company. But in 2019 or in 2018, they're paying $1.36 per share. So as you can see, the dividend amount increased. So they started off paying 37 cents, but now they're paying $1.36. So in 25 years, the dividend increased three times three and a half times so basically five percent per year as we calculated before but if you look at the yield which is the dividend amount divided by the stock price it was probably around the same around five percent so 37 cents on 17 dollars back in 1995 so it's 37 cents times four because it's paid out four times a year divided by the 17 dollars is about an eight percent yield so back in 1995 the dividends on CIBC was 8% per year, so that's very good. But in 2018, the yield is 5%, which is already given when you look at the chart of CIBC. But here, let's just look at it here. It's a dollar thirty-six every three months. So a dollar thirty-six times four divided by 109, which is the current stock price, which is a 5% yield. So the yield actually decreased for ABC since 1995. The dividend dollar did not increase as much as the stock price of the company. So there was more stock appreciation than a dividend increase. So for this example. So yeah, so you see that in 1995, CIBC was trading at 16 or $17 and right now it's trading at 109. So that's a great increase. But of course, you're not putting all your money at $16 because you're investing every month. So you're buying at different prices during those 25 years. So your capital appreciation is not 109 divided by $17. It's going to be the average of these prices, which we can calculate easily by downloading the historical data. So if you go to Yahoo Finance, look up the stock, go to historical data. And then let's let's pick 1995 till today. Click done, and then let's pick monthly prices. Click apply. Download data. So these are the monthly prices for CIBC since 1995. So if you bought every month CIBC stock, your average price would be sixty-seven dollars. At as you can see over here, it's probably too small for you to see, but it's $67. So your average cost of CIBC shares in 25 years, if you bought every month for 25 years with the same amount, your cost would be $67. And right now it's trading at 109. So just in capital appreciation, you'd be up 1.62 times your principal. So if we go back to our financial calculator here, Let's say we had twelve thousand that we're putting every month. Our principal here is this is the this is how much we actually invested of our own money, three hundred thousand. So this three hundred thousand after twenty five years is not going to be worth three hundred three hundred thousand. It's going to be worth more because the stock that you bought increased in value, and in the example of CIBC, it increased by sixty two percent if you had bought every month for twenty five years. So this three hundred thousand is actually worth. 488,000 so let's say let's say an extra 200,000 gets added so instead of actually so the, the value of, of your portfolio will not be 572,000 it's going to be we're going to add an extra 200,000 here so it's going to be about about 800,000 the interest is going to remain the same because the returns are on the shares you buy not on the value of your portfolio because you're not selling 
your capital gains. You're not selling the capital appreciation. The dividends are paid based on the number of shares you, you have. So whether the stock goes from 16 to $100, you still have the same number of shares, except that one share is worth more. What does that give you? It's just nice to know that the value of your portfolio has grown. It's extra security in case you need to sell if you need more money than the dividends that you're receiving. And obviously, it's good to know that your money did not, your $1,000 did not stay at $1,000 after 25 years or else with inflation, it, it would actually be worthless. So at least you know that your principal has beaten inflation in 25 years. So you, st you saw that we started off with a yield of 8%, yield being the amount of dividends you receive divided by the cost of the stock. So in 1995, it was 8% the yield, but in 2018, it's 5%. So that can be explained by the stock price being growing faster than the dividends. So the dividends have grown because it, as you can see here in 2018, it's $1.36, but in 1995, it's 37 cents. So dividends have grown, but the stock price has grown faster. And you could, based on our calculations, the dividends have grown about 5% every year. So in our example here, our principal is 300,000. So that's how much, how much money we've invested throughout the 25 years to buy stocks. So if we invested 300,000 and we know that we bought at an average price of $67, we could say that we have, after 25 years, we have 4,470, we've bought 4,477 shares of CIBC. But remember, we were receiving dividends year after year that we used to buy more shares. So that'll be our interest. So our 272,000 of interest that we collected year after year, and we bought at an average price of 67. So we can say we have another 4,059 shares because of that. And the increase in price doesn't change anything, does not give us more shares because we didn't sell our shares to buy more shares. The same shares that we bought initially just increased in value, but th that doesn't give us more shares. What gives us more shares is the dividends that we collected to buy more shares. So in our example here, we, s we gave ourselves a 5% return, but if we started off in 1995, it, this should actually be eight because as you could see, the yield back in 1995 was 8%. So the yield might change, the return might change, and that's something we can't control, but I used 5% just to be conservative. All right, so based on our calculations, it, it's safe to say that after 25 years, if we invest $1,000 in CIBC every month to buy shares regardless of the price for 25 years, we're gonna be buying at an average price of $67 throughout the 25 years. We're gonna end up with 4,477 shares plus the 4,059. So we're gonna end up with, with about 8,537 shares after 25 years. Now, knowing that CIBC right now pays $1.36 per share, we can calculate our revenue after 25 years. So $1.36 times the number of shares we have. So we'd be getting $11,610 every three months from CIBC after 25 years. So if we invest $1,000 every month, to buy CIBC stock, regardless of the price, for 25 years, collect the dividends to buy more, more CIBC stock that pay more dividends, collect the dividends to reinvest to buy more stocks. We do that for 25 years consistently. And if we only put in $1,000 a month, after 25 years, we decide, okay, we're not gonna reinvest anymore. We're gonna collect, we're gonna live off the dividends. You'd be getting $11,610 every three months from CIBC. So per month, that's about $3,870. So if we go back to our financial calculator, we said that our portfolio is gonna be worth about 800,000, but we're collecting 3870 per month. So let's do times 12. And let's say our, port our portfolio is worth, the value of our portfolio is 800,000. I just wanna see what would be our new yield. So our new yield would be the 46,000 per year in dividends that we're collecting divided by 800,000. 
So yeah, our yield is our yield our yield would be about six percent because we would divide the dividends that we're collecting, the dollar amount. We would take that divided by the value, the market value of our portfolio. We might have only invested three hundred thousand, but our portfolio is worth eight hundred thousand because the stock price grew. So you have to take into consideration the market value because basically that's money that you could potentially do something else with. So you can't just ignore it. You have to take it into consideration. If you're not doing anything with that money, that's an opportunity cost. So if you leave it in your investment, so basically your 800000 is generating you $46,000 a year or $3,870 per month. So that's really the power of dividend investing. That's why it's so passive. If someone told you at 18, save $1,000 a month for 25 years. If you do that, buy the same quality stock for 25 years, regardless of the price. After 25 years, you'd be you'd have $3,870 per month of disposable income to do what you want with. It could be extra income or it could even be enough for you to retire depending where you live. If you live in a country in South America or in Africa or even some countries in Europe, you could easily retire with a thousand or two thousand dollars Canadian per month and live comfortably. So depending on your lifestyle and depending where you want to live, three thousand eight hundred seventy dollars could be enough for you to retire on. But remember, this is you would get this only if you put a thousand dollars a month for twenty five years. Now imagine if you were putting two thousand dollars a month, just double this. So you'd be making about seventy two hundred, seventy six hundred. You'd be making about seventy six hundred per month. And you know that this would always be coming in and it year after year it would actually increase so this a dollar 36 that you're receiving next year it's going to be a little bit more so you could see here in 2015 it was a it was a dollar six so it increases year after year so it's perfect because it increases more than inflation so the passive income that you're receiving once you decide to retire and just live off the dividends collect the dividends that source of income increases year after year so as you can see, it's truly the best passive income out there. It's very easy to set up. It's not time consuming. It's effortless. All you have to do is be patient. If you have the luxury of time, invest every month, whatever you can save, buy quality stocks that, that are on discount, or even if you don't care that it, even if you don't buy them at discount, if you just buy them, if you average out every month, regardless of the price, because the stock, because in, in the long term, the stock market will always go up. The cost of your purchases will always be lower than the actual value of the stock. As you can see, in 25 years, our cost was $67, but CIBC is currently trading at 109 And it, I think the 52-week high was about 125 So it won't take long for it to reach 125 almost almost doubling your investment in, in the past 25 years but when you invest for dividends you're not you don't really care about the capital gain you care about the income that's generated every year or every three months because that income is not going to change the price of the stock is going to fluctuate so that's what's also great about dividend investing is that you don't have to worry yourself about the stock price or market fluctuations it's less of a headache much less time consuming and then at some point, you know exactly how much you'll be getting in income and that income will be increasing year after year. And it is very easy to set up. Anyone could do it. It's a slowly but surely way to reach financial freedom. As you can see with this simple example, now there's many other stocks I could show you, basically any Canadian bank stock, but most of them will, they will mostly be the same. Obviously, you don't want to put your money in, in one place. You want to diversify, but... You want to diversify amongst quality stocks and usually they all pay around the same thing four to five percent now imagine if you're 18 you give yourself 25 years so that's 43 but let's say you want to go an extra seven years till you're 50 years old so let's give ourselves let's give ourselves 32 years same numbers a thousand dollars a month for for 32 years five percent interest rate you would be at nine hundred thousand dollars and we're going to add let's say 67 percent to our principal of three hundred eighty four thousand so you'd be around you'd be around 1.3 million here so your future value you're considering the same yield let's say we're, we're going because we added seven years so our dividends increased even more so let's say we're making a yield of seven percent of our 
total value investment on the total value of our investment so let's say 0.07 now this is being very conservative on 1.3 million you'd be making $91,000 per year if you just continue for another seven years after 25 years so you can really see the power of dividend investing if you have the luxury of time and if you really want that passive income lifestyle and the earlier you start the younger you can take advantage of that passive income lifestyle and like i said anyone could do it simply open a trading account with either your bank or an online brokerage like quest trade which i have a referral code in the description below the video that allows you to get between $25 and $250 depending on your deposit. And there's also a referral link that you could use if you want to get $50 in free trade. So the choice is yours. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also check out the referral links in the description below the video to help support the channel. Thanks for watching.